let's talk about Wizards of the Grimoire, an engine building card game about dueling wizards. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald, and in this episode, we're going to talk about another game that I picked up at Breakout in March, the game convention in Toronto. Uh, this is a game about dueling wizards, and it, really, it's a card game where you're building up an engine of spells. Uh, it's a game by Grimoire Games called, appropriately enough, Wizards of the Grimoire. This is a game for two players. It's a dueling card game for two players. The box says age 14 to 999, so if you're a thousand years old, you're out of luck, and games take about 20 to 40 minutes to play. Let's take a deeper look at Wizards of the Grimoire by Grimoire Games. So the box for Wizards of the Grimoire, as you can see, is appropriately enough a Grimoire. It looks like a wizard's book. It does close with a magnetic clasp, and I always like games uh, with boxes that close that way. Um, but what you're doing in this game, this is a light engine building dueling game so it is light in terms of its complexity as I said that the box says age 14 and up but I think younger kids if they're familiar with these kinds of card games where you're zapping each other to reduce health or energy you know, people people who play Pokemon would be able to I think figure out this game although I do think it's more clever in some ways than the Pokemon game your mileage may vary on that one uh, I was never really into Pokemon it was a little bit after my time it resembles maybe more a Magic the Gathering type game because, as I said, you're two wizards, you're fighting each other, you're trying to knock that health down. You're going to win the game when your opponent's health is at zero. It starts at 60, both wizards have a health of 60 at the beginning, and then you're whittling it down to zero. Um, there are two decks in the game. One deck is, is a mana deck. This is the energy that you're using to power your spells. The cards are numbered from one to four usually that doesn't matter. Really what you're doing is you're counting the number of cards as opposed to the number on the front, but some cards do make that matter a little bit, and there's one action you can take at the beginning, at the end, pardon me, of your turn where the numbers on the front of the cards do actually have some impact. Now before I talk about how the turns work in Wizards of the Grimoire, I, th I think it's good to know how these spells work. You're going to be drafting one of these spells into your engine at the start of your turn. You can have a maximum of six spells, but once that six fills up, if you've got one that you haven't used in a while, you can replace that one with a new one if you get something that pops up that you like better. The spell cards all have an icon in the top left that indicate whether it's a, an attack card or a rejuvenation card, whether it's an instant attack or delayed, or whether it has some recurring or ongoing effect. Uh, and then there's a number underneath that, uh, a number that has a picture of cards, I guess, in the background, because that's, that's the mana amount that you're going to have to spend to cast that spell. So you have these cards. If a spell costs three mana, I'm going to take three of my mana cards and put them face down on top of that, say, Doom Drop, if that's a spell that I have. And then this effect down here is going to take place. Now, sometimes there are spells that allow you to take mana off a card. This is the cooldown. This is how the game balances out the more powerful spells because when there are cards on top of here, you can't use them again. And I'll talk about how that cooldown works because it does spread things out a little bit and forces you to be a little bit clever in the spells that you put into your engine. First thing you're going to do on your turn is you're going to draft one of the cards out of the 10 card marketplace in the middle of the table. You're going to put that card in your engine. As I said, there's a maximum of six. The next thing that happens is a cooldown phase. So you take one of those mana cards off of the spells that you cast previously to, so that it will eventually be ready to be cast again. So that spell, if I cast it last turn, that spell with three mana on, on top would cool down in the next turn to two, then there would only be one, and then on the turn after that, I'd be able to actually use that spell again. Those mana cards that are placed face down on top of your spells get discarded into a discard pile beside the mana deck. The discard pile is sometimes important too. There are some spells that allow you to search the mana discard pile and take a certain mana, a certain number of cards into your hand. So if you need cards with high numbers, there are only a few fours in this big mana deck, then uh, that's, a, that's a great card to have where you could cast a spell and grab some number fours out of that deck because these fours are a little bit hard to come by. 
After you've drafted and you've done your cooldown, you do get to draw three mana cards from the deck. So you're always replenishing your mana a little bit. Some of these cards are quite expensive. This Crushing Blow over here costs five mana. It's going to deal six damage, but you're only going to be able to cast it every once in a while unless you have a spell, like I said, that allows you to take mana off of those cards and speed up that cooldown phase of the game. After you've cast your spells and you've figured out those effects, there's one last thing that you get to do on your turn. It's called a basic attack, and I can discard one of the mana cards from my hand and do that amount of damage to my opponent. So I might save that number four and use it as a basic attack. Although I will say, sometimes there are cards where if you take the, a mana card off of them, the number becomes important. Oh, take a mana off of this other spell and do that much damage to your opponent. Take a mana off this spell and draw that many mana cards from the deck. So there are lots of clever ways that these cards interact together and interact with the mana deck uh, and, and your opponent uh, in terms of how you're going to whittle the, them down and win that game. And that's it. You go back and forth drafting and casting spells in just about every game we played it came down to the last or second last turn you know if I survive this time I'm going to knock you out next turn so uh, it's always very very tense at the end what skills though are you working on when you play Wizards of the Grimoire this is as I said it's an engine building game but you do have to sort of be creative in putting the right combination of cards together into your engine uh, in order to kind of maximize its effectiveness. You're, you're doing some creative problem solving and adjusting those solutions on the fly based on the cards in your opponent's engine. If your opponent has an engine that's generating lots of mana for them, you might want to grab a spell in your engine that forces them to discard those cards or does damage for every card that they have in their hand. There are all kinds of interactions like that. So you're constantly developing a strategy and adjusting it as you play and when you're doing that we are talking about flexible problem solving fluid reasoning is the skill there's some pattern recognition that we're talking about uh, when we're looking at fluid reasoning and you are looking for the patterns and the combinations in those cards there's also uh, some math reasoning and math reasoning is part of fluid reasoning where especially if you have cards that allow you to pull mana cards off and do damage or draw cards equal to the numbers that are on you're calculating out okay if my cooldown phase next turn I'm gonna discard the card off the top of that one and then I'm gonna cast this spell which will allow me to flip that next card that's a card I want it to be a high number or a low number or whatever uh, so you are calculating out like what order do I want to place these mana cards in Again, you're not always doing that. It depends on what's in your engine, but that's where the fluid reasoning and quantitative reasoning skills come in. And then there's memory. I know that there were times where I had a spell, you know, discard a card off the top of another one of your spells and do that much damage or draw that many cards. I needed to remember where the fours and threes were because those are the ones that I wanted to get. But I'm trying to remember that while also remembering there's a cooldown. So those cards are coming off the top. Where did I put that number four in the stack of mana that's on top of that spell so there's some memory involved here too where you're trying to remember where you put things and you might have to develop a pattern where okay all my fours and threes are going to go on top of this card and it's that's going to make it easy for me to remember where i put things as i play through the game final thoughts about wizards of the grimoire this is a game I was excited to talk about for a couple of reasons. This game, It is a couple of years old, but there is a new expansion coming, I think, early next year uh, in 2025. Um, but it's a game that I picked up only in March, but we've played it a lot because, you know, if one person arrives at for early for game night, now you've got a two-player game that plays in about 20 or 30, 30 minutes you can play while you're waiting for the third person to come it's quick it's easy to explain and it is a lot of fun we have had a lot of laughs playing this game the artwork is beautiful uh, there's a great number of spells and variety of spells so no game is exactly the same or at least in our experience you do I mean there's some repetition but I played a game just the other day and some new spells popped out that never came up in a game that we played before 
Um, so the artwork is great, even on the mana cards with the lightning bolts and the increasing number of lightning and the brighter colors as, as the cards become more powerful. All of the artwork is good. The symbology is easy to understand when you're playing through the game. Uh, the effects are easy. We didn't have to look up, you know, I'm not going online for an FAQ to figure out how does this card work with that one. Everything was very clear. This game is very, very clever. The cards are thick and durable, which I think is important, especially in the mana deck, because this is the one you're really shuffling through the most out of any of the cards in the game. Uh, so they are, they, I mean, it's it's a, a couple of decks here that I think are going to last a long time just because they are made of, of such thick material. S sometimes they do stick a little bit together, and because they're so thick, it feels like I'm getting two cards, and sometimes you are getting more than one card when you pull that off the deck. So we often had to make sure, you know, am I counting up the right number? Uh, so they are a little bit tough to shuffle and deal out, um, but like, like I said, I think that they're very sturdy. The engine building component of this game is excellent. So you're doing that card drafting, it's the engine building that really sings in this game. You can make such fun combinations. And, and because the cards work together in so many different ways, it is easy to build some combos. I mean, you might not have six cards that all work together perfectly, but you're always going to have something interesting or fun to do with those six cards in your deck. Um, and as I said, all of the games were always close. So this is a really, really great design with cards that work well together. But what do I know about the expansion? I know that there are some maybe cards that have more complex kind of interactions with the other cards. And there are going to be relic cards, which are going to be single use cards that go into your engine. And then they have some impact and they disappear. Then you can replace them. Uh, in your engine. So um, how that's going to work, I haven't obviously tried that out yet. That that expansion hasn't been released. Um, but boy, just the base game uh, is is really one that all the folks I know who, who like engine builders were fascinated by this thing. And it was it's a real low bar for entry in terms of the complexity. I will say, even though it is a very accessible game and, and the card interactions make sense based on the text of the card and the icons on the card um, there were there I mean there are still some new ways that you can there's a few cards that seem like oh this might be a little bit more complicated to use I might need something really special in order to make this card useful to me there's not too many cards that popped up that at least in one game or the other somebody didn't say oh that's one that I want to bring <laughs> into my engine um, are there downsides though to Wizards of the Grimoire? Uh, it's a, a two-player only game. So, you know, once the third player arrives, they're going to be sitting and watching you finish up your game of Wizards if they if they showed up late. Um, the, the cards are durable, but like I said, they do, they're a bit hard to shuffle and deal out. They're, they kind of stick together a little bit and you, you think you have two and sometimes you do have two. You always have to be really careful. Some of the backs are a little bit uneven in terms of their color, but we found that the decks were so big and, and the way that things get shuffled up, that didn't really have an impact on gameplay in any way. Um, it's, it's one where I've, I will confess that I have thought about sleeving the mana cards if I could find some sleeves that are easy to shuffle just because these ones are a little harder to shuffle and deal out. So if I had sleeves that were less sticky, maybe that, that might be tempting, even though I don't usually sleeve my cards. That being said, this is, I think, a very, very clever, tight, well-designed card-based dueling game. Probably the best card dueling game I've played since Radlands, and I really liked Radlands. I, I mean, I'll confess to you that I, I, I haven't played a lot of card dueling games since Radlands, but man, that was a great game. And this one scratches that same itch, but you've got a, a bit of a more complex engine building system uh, here, at least as far as I remember from playing Radlands. It's been a minute since I played it. We've been playing this thing constantly. So uh, Grimoire Games, you've really made, I think you've really made something special here. I'm really excited for the expansion Shifting Sands. Uh, I am unfortunately missed the Kickstarter. I didn't know anything about Wizards of the Grimoire when this game came out. So uh, I'm going to have to wait till that one releases. But 
What a great little game. If you can get your hands on it to test it out. Uh, I think if you like engine building games, if you like card dueling games, this is a very, very good uh, example uh, of kind of the, the pinnacle, I think, of that genre. So uh, Grimoire Games, great job here. I'm looking forward to seeing your next effort. If you have any questions or suggestions or comments, you can, of course, leave them in the comment section below the video, or you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca. Brainsongames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes will go, and the previous ones are up there already. Brains on Games is the X handle and the Facebook page and the Instagram feed, so we're all over the place. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of future ones, you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me, and hopefully I'll see you next time.